Yeah, there's two models of Benito. There's the one that we've done that has the construction sequences. And then there's the, the model in the visitor center of Benito as it looked, what, what it looked like in 1941. And to create that, um, I used uh, what's called pole aerial photography, or PAP uh, for short. And that's a camera mounted on the end of a pole so that you get an aerial perspective of what you're photographing. And I used a GoPro to do it. Um, primarily because the GoPro has a real nice wide angle lens on it. And also, uh, once you're, you've got it up there, uh, for I did it all myself, so for expediency's sake, uh, trying to watch on a monitor what you're pointing at is kind of, it, it's for something the size of Pueblo Benito, it doesn't make sense. So having that wide angle view, uh, I could move the camera around and have a pretty good idea, you know, visualization in my head, what I was getting on the ground, and move it around, uh, go through all of Benito that way, and use that with centimeter, grade, centimeter accuracy GPS, so survey grade GPS, uh, to get the photos, the photo models from that in the right place, and to do that. Traditionally, people tend to use targets, which again, you're doing it by yourself, you got a lot of area. You put a target down some, you know, in this nice location and uh, a visitor comes along and sees that target and decides they want a souvenir or moves it on you, which is the real, you think it's here and they put it here. Um, so instead of doing that, I just used uh, my phone because these are uh, millimeter sized pixels by the time you, you get them in. Uh, Put the, put the tripod or it was a bipod down on the point, a uh, rock in the wall that you know you can pick out from, aerial, from the photos and set it there, take out the phone, do a video of that all the way around so that you can get it from whatever angle you might, the photo might be because, you know, about, about 3,600 photos of Benito, so you don't know where, where you, you're just taking photos. Uh, then you could go back in and say, yep, that's that point and go through and adjust everything so that you've got a really, really accurate model of Benito. Of course, Threatening Rock fell down on Benito and took part of it out. Uh, to get that into the model, the idea was to get, make the model look like it did in 1940 before it fell, Threatening Rock fell in 1941. Uh, so we had to get that portion of it back in. We had Pepper's map, which is actually really accurate. Pepper's map and also Judd's map of Benito. In that section, they're, they're reasonably accurate. I mean, really accurate. So we used that for, for the walls, their position. And then we had photos from uh, you know, the 1880s, 1890s, early 1900s showing those. So you could get those walls from different angles. And since we knew exactly what the elevation of the walls were on either side, then you could interpolate pretty accurately the rest of the walls. And in that model, I did six inch contours. So there's a six inch elevation contour on every wall that then the, the, architect, uh, the architectural model builder went back in and built the model from that. He literally, I made it so he could print it out on, on, on a sheet of paper that he then glued down to the, the board that the model was built on 
and go through and sculpt each each wall the way it was, including the elevations on the, the uh, doors. So that's all accurate, measured from the model as well. But uh, yeah, it's the most accurate model of Pueblo Benito out there for sure. My love, one more for me. Beneath.